What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Mastermind Creations Saltus Alternative Version, their version of a Masterpiece Springer. So this is the recolored version. It's the exact same mold, but it has been painted slightly differently. It's actually very hard to tell the difference. Let's put the image of the original there so you can take a look. In this mode, it's very hard to see what the differences are, but I believe this grill here on the front is a slightly sh lighter shade of yellow. Before it was like a more brighter yellow. And I'm hard to tell, but I believe the green is a darker green on this one. Again, the images are very hard to tell. I don't have the original, so I'm not sure. I did ask Mr. Pig for Life, who is Mr. MMC, and he even had a hard time telling the differences. He did suggest that the green was a little bit darker, but again, hard to tell from the images. Um, not too much different, at least in this mode. You do get a collector's card here, and it says PS12A Assaultus Alternative. Here's the back. You get a bio and the tech specs there. Typical MMC card. You get instructions, but they're not the best. Now this transformation isn't bad at all. It's it's really well done. So luckily you don't need these, but these are very, very useless. You're, you're better off just watching a video from Paik or my video, which I'm going to be making right now. So I just, they're, they're just incomplete, right? They don't have enough pictures to make it useful. So here is the figure. Let's take a close up on it. Here's some nice details, a very good looking vehicle mode. You get these, you know, wheel covers here. They are rubber tires. It does roll very smoothly. It's nice and heavy and hefty. It's got a lot of die cast. Here's the back. Got some paint detail back there and then a little booster rocket there. The fins here, are they painted? Uh, I think they're painted, hard to tell. The plastic quality is very, very high, so it's hard to tell when, if the plastic's painted or if it's just really nice plastic, but it does look good. This is obviously all painted on the front here. This part here is painted, and then underneath some of the, the green, the darker green is painted as well. All that looks really nice. You do get some features here in the vehicle mode, so you can open up these headlights here, and he can be doing that. You got some nice translucent orange plastic. You can also open up this cockpit here and surprisingly it does fit figures from the Masterpiece line. So he fits right in there. You can see he can put his hands around the steering wheel. That's really cool. Close that up and he can ride around inside a Springer in vehicle mode. It's actually one of the better looking vehicle modes. Springer always looks kind of weird. In fact, let's put the G1 cartoon Springer. It's just an awkward, weird looking vehicle, no matter how you do it. Now, this doesn't look very much like the G1 cartoon, but I do think it's a good looking vehicle compared to what Springer is supposed to look like. All right. Uh, there are some other features here. So you do get the gun. And that can be mounted here. You take this little adapter and you plug that in right here. A little, little slot right there on the side. And then tab that in right here on the side of the vehicle. You can see there's a little slot. And that's nice. I, I like when they think about weapon storage, you know, and that's a good spot for it. You can also take his sword, which doubles as his helicopter blade, of course. And you get this adapter here. It is painted. Uh, you do want to insert this all the way back, as far back as you can, on the thinnest part of the blade, because you're going to have to take this off, and you don't want to scratch the paint here. I'll go ahead and get that tabbed on as far down as you can. You can see there's two tabs on the end, and there's two slots here on the other side. So you can get the blade in between here, and then tab that in. And now he's fully armed up, and he's got weapon storage, and that all looks nice and works. And for size comparison, there is Saltus next to the Fans Toys version of Blur and the DX9 version of Carry. This has always been too, too small in vehicle mode, but it looks nice next to the Fans Toys stuff. It just fits in well. All right, now let's get. Saltus into his helicopter mode. You do get this other accessory here, which we'll look at in the robot mode, but I guess you could, I don't know, do something with it here, whatever, you could store it. 
All right, but let's get this guy transformed into helicopter mode. Uh, relatively simple and easy. I really like how they designed this. So go ahead and unpeg this from here and just put that down for now. You're going to take this whole panel that's going to unpeg from the side here and then it's going to lift upwards and away on this arm right here. So that's just going to move out of the way. Take this panel here that's going to fold down and then that's going to flip upwards like that. And leave this panel like this for now. Come to the bottom here and we're going to take this arm has to flip to the outside. So go ahead and take this and then flip that to the outside. Right. And that's going to tab in right there. You can see there's a slot and a tab. Go ahead and get that in there. Rotate the arm, get it situated, and then push it down and get it tabbed into the bottom and to the side. So you can see I got it tabbed into both spots. Um, this should stay downwards. So come to here, unpeg this tab. This can fold downwards and just sit there for now. Take this entire panel, uh, first unpeg it from the side, then lift it up and away from here. Come to the bottom, take this arm, and that's going to rotate to the outside and then get pegged into the side and the bottom again. There we go. And again, you have to get this all situated. All right, next, we'll take care of the legs. Go ahead and unpeg this from the back. And actually, we're going to take care of this too. So you can see there's two tabs there going to go into there. So fold that downwards. And then while you're doing that, bring that back. And just tab that in. It is a tight fit, but it works. And then take this whole piece and slide that forward for now. We're going to push it back, but it gives you a little room to work in there. All right, so come to the back here. Take these panels. These are going to lift upwards. And the sequence is important here. So fold this out. Take this panel here. Fold that out. And then this should go all the way so that it sits on top and pegs in right there. So you can see it's going to peg in down there. All right. So same on this side, lift this up, rotate it all the way around, unpeg this from here, and then this can go all the way down and peg into the bottom. Um, these are going to fold the other way around so they're facing downwards. All right. Now that we have that, we're going to take these legs and these are tabbed into the side of the hips. So untab those both sides. Take that tab that was sticking out and fold that in. So that's not in the way anymore. Rotate the leg upwards. And, and that's going to fit underneath here. Same on this side. Rotate the leg upwards and that's going to fit under here. Now we can take both of these legs and tab them together. All the way back, just work your way back to the tail. Uh, we forgot to do these, so go ahead and take these, and those are going to fold downwards. Very satisfying clicky clicks there. Take this, now you can push this back, and this is going to tab in back here. So make sure you get the tab in on both sides. It's a little bit tricky. Okay, there we go. I think I got both. So it's kind of locked in now. Now we can come back to the front and finish working on these. Come to the bottom, open this up, take the wheels, fold those in, and then fold that back down. And we're going to take care of these side pieces here. So this is going to fold backwards, down, and then tab in. And this actually just stays straight. I found that a little bit odd. I thought it would like tab in, but this green piece is just going to sit there. Same on this side, tab that in. This is going to collapse down. It's supposed to tab in here and here. 
I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I just don't have it lined up or I've got something off, but I've, I've had trouble getting this in. If you get it, it goes, but it's very, very tight. I'll try this one now. There we go. I got it. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's just, it's very tight. Oh, I guess maybe this is the problem. Maybe I don't have these. These have to be angled so they end up underneath. Maybe that's the problem. So I guess make sure you have these oriented properly. All right, so we're getting there. Almost done. Go ahead and take your sword. And we're going to open this up. Actually, so before you open it up, take this off. Um, and just flip it off one edge first. That'll, that's the most gentle way to take it apart. Uh, and this is just going to fold apart. Let's see. It's a little tight. But you want to... There we go. So once you get that apart, then fold it outwards. And that's going to tab into here. And there you have Saltus in the helicopter mode. We'll put the G1 cartoon there so you can take a look. Really good, good looking. I really like the way this came out. I think they have a really nice design. Um, my only issue is, you know, this sits a little bit loosely. And again, it's possible I don't have that right, but it looks really nice. I love how the cockpit is big enough. I like how the engines ended up over here. Um, these are a little bit on the wiggly side. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do something with them. There's nothing in the instructions about them, but they do feel a little bit on the wiggly side. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. But either way, they look good. They're painted. This whole front surface is painted here. This is painted here. All of this is painted up here. The blade is painted. Coming back here, uh, this is just plastic, I believe. There's a little bit of paint here and here. You end up with the neat little, I think it's just a screw hole cover, but it ends up looking like a gas, gas tank. Um, but either way, I really like the way this looks. It's really well done. You can sort of fake the weapons attachment. So same place, you would take this and basically attach that on the side here. It doesn't quite fit as securely, but you can put it there. Uh, and obviously you don't need to mount the sword because that's become the blade. So really nice. I really like the way this turned out. And for size comparison, there is Saltus next to the MP52 Starscream. Looks good to me. Fits in well. Nice size jet. And it works for Masterpiece. All right, now let's get Saltus transformed into his robot mode, the third mode. Go ahead and take this out. I'm going to just collapse that back down. It does tab in together very securely and nicely. Set that aside. And we're going to undo everything that we just did. So go ahead and unpeg these from the side. Lift this up and away from the side. Go ahead and take the arm. And we're going to unpeg that from here and here. This can just fold back down and up into the shoulder. And this is going to end up pegging in, so you don't have to worry about it. But right now it's, you know, sits a little loose. There's a tab here on the back of the elbow that's going to tab into there. And that's going to make his elbow joint, which is really kind of smart stuff. All right, we can do the same thing on the other side. Might as well just take care of this too, so... Rotate this to the front and rotate his elbow to the front. This is going to collapse down. So we're going to take all of this and collapse this down like that. So you have something like that. And it does peg into the arm, so just make sure you get everything pegged in. Come to the bottom here, open up the classic MP transformation. Oh, I'm a little bit stuck there. Okay, there we go. I just had to rotate it a little bit and then fold that down and that's one arm done. So let's go to the other side. Same thing, unpeg this from the side and from the top. Take the arm, unpeg that from those two tabs. Fold this in, fold that in, and then fold that up. 
take the arm and tab that elbow in like that. Rotate the elbow to the front. Take this piece, this is going to fold down and tab in. You can see there's um, tabs there on the side. Take this, according this down, and tab it into the back of the arm. And again, it should end up looking something like that. Open up the panel on the bottom, flip out the hand. And if I guess it, I might have this hand in incorrectly, but it does seem to be getting caught up there. All right, and those are the arms pretty much done. Come to the back here, we're going to slide this up. So we're going to have to basically unpeg that. So slide that up. And that's going to allow you to free up these legs. Actually, I didn't know this had an ab crunch, so I'm glad I found that. <laughs> Go ahead and unpeg the legs from each other. Those are going to fold downwards. We're now going to take care of the legs. We're going to basically undo this exactly the way we did it before. So go ahead and unpeg this from here. Rotate this to the side. You take this panel, and that's going to fold up, fold this upwards, and that's going to sit like that. Take this, rotate that in, and then tab that into the leg. The knee will fold with it, so fold that back out, straighten up the leg. Come to the bottom here, you're going to fold down the toe, fold down the heel, and you should end up with a nice flat foot like that. And then rotate the leg to the front. Make sure that goes to the back. And that's one leg pretty much done. So same thing on this side. Unpeg this from here. I'm going to fold this upwards. Rotate this all the way down. And then take that entire thing and that's going to tab into there. Open up the knee. Fold this down. Rotate the leg forward. Make sure you get this tab to the back. Open up the toe. And open up the heel. Make a nice flat foot. And there are your legs all done. So continuing on, we're going to work on the head here. Actually, I guess we have the legs rotated the wrong way, so rotate them the other way. Okay. Next, go ahead and take these panels here and unpeg those from the inside. They're really well done. I like the way they did that. Same on this side, fold that out. Come to the top here. Make sure you have this slid back. Open up this uh, cockpit piece here. So fold down the nose and then open up this. And that's gonna allow you to take the entire chest and flip that down. Open up this abdomen piece. And that's gonna tab into here, 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 and here. So you're gonna do all four at the same time. You just gotta look and make sure you're getting them. It can be easy to miss a tab or two. So just take a look, make sure you got them all. Straighten up the head. In the arms come to the back we'll take care of this go ahead and close that up take this that's going to slide all the way up and there you have saltus in his robot mode really cool looking uh, let's before i forget let's take a look at the original saltus the non-alternative version and i'll try to point out the differences at least the ones that i can tell so first we do have the slightly lighter chest here, you know, it's a darker yellow. The thighs, instead of being a greenish tint, are more beige. And same as the hands, they're both the same color. The green here, it looks the same to me, but I, I showed a picture to Paik and, you know, Paik reviewed the original. He seemed to think these were darker. Now, he's looking at a picture. It's harder to tell in a picture than in real life, but maybe this is a shade darker. But... Very, very close to the original. It's, it, it's almost impossible to tell the differences other than the things I pointed out already. Well, there you go for that. Uh, let's also put up the G1 image there. You can take a look at how he looks next to the G1 image. Pretty close, pretty, pretty good looking. I do think that the black here on the arms does kind of pull away from the sculpt because in the cartoon he didn't have those uh, black pieces in the middle. It was just green. Uh, but either way, it's still a good-looking Springer overall. So let's take a look at his accessories. 
So first you get the gun, you do want to fold the handle down like that. It's just a sculpted gray plastic with a black handle. And you can open up the hand here. And this is tolerance to very nicely, it fits right in there, nice and tight. And you can close down the hand and he can be pretty much gone. Uh, you can also open up the other hand and you can take the sword and it's got the little tab again. This one doesn't seem to fit as securely as sug snugly. I'm not sure why, but if you close the hand around it, he does hold it pretty well. And you also get the missile that helped defend Autobot City in the movie. It is painted with this blue and then the yellow here. And that looks nice. You can sort of get him to hold it you can, I mean, not really, but sort of, you can just kind of, there you go. That's about the best you're going to get. <laughs> um, you also get a couple of alternate heads. So there's the standard face you get. Pretty good looking. It's got the metallic blue eyes, the yellow around, and that looks nice. And there is the smiling face. <sighs> I don't know. It's a little too cheesy for me. But you do get that. And then there's the differently styled head. I think it's more supposed to be IDW because it's kind of taller or stretched out. You can see the, the head crest is a little bit longer and pointier. And then the face is a little bit different. So I believe that's supposed to be their IDW head sculpt. And to go with that head sculpt, you get this staff, which will take this piece here. And you can plug that into there. And then you can take this piece here. Now this can end up being a little sword if you want it. Or you can put it on here. It, it is a tight fit. But there you go. He's got a trident. And I mean, I guess this is from IDW. I am not familiar, so I can't say. So there you go. There he is holding the trident. Now it doesn't, it's not very secure. So, and it's also very long. <laughs> So you can't, you've got to have to basically sitting on the ground, otherwise he can't hold it. But it looks good, and I guess you get that IDW look or whatever this is from, and that's that's neat. Now, of course, you can store the weapons still using these adapters here on his back. So if you prefer to store the weapons, you can. So there's a sword, and you take the gun, fold up the handle, Grab the little piece here, get that pegged in, and then that can also sit on the back. So if you need to, you can store away his weapons while he's doing something else. One final little feature here is on the arms. You can open up this to reveal the little guns that he used, and it's even painted in there, that blue. And that's from that one scene from the movie where he had these little blastered his arm. So a pretty cool little inclusion. Now let's go over Saltus articulation. So starting with the head, the head is on, a, it's an interesting joint here, so it kind of extends forward so you can get way, way down. You can get way up and of course it rotates on that swivel. I mean it's a really cool joint. I, I haven't seen one like that uh, and it really allows for a lot of movement. So I like the way they did that. It kind of pulls out and extends. And the head sculpt itself is well done. The shoulders rotate all the way around. There is a butterfly. If you pull out on this, you can get the shoulder out a little bit more. And I knocked out the shoulder piece here. And that'll give you this butterfly joint there. Or if you don't want that, you can kind of collapse it down. And then basically hides away that extra joint there. Uh, you do get a rotation at the bicep. You have a double jointed elbow, gets you the full bend all the way through. You have a rotation at the wrist. You do have individually articulated fingers. The bottom three are curved and have a single pin, which I don't mind if you've made the pointer finger allowed to be bent. Now this one's a little bit weird because it goes back that way, so he can overextend his finger. Um, and it's not pinned, it's actually friction but it just, it stays, it feels good, it's solid, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break. So nice pointer finger there. The rotation at the waist, 
ab crunch, which I discovered earlier, didn't even realize, goes all the way down there. It does have a locking point, so if you want to lock it, you can lock it into place. You have hip skirts here, goes up to there on a ratchet, back to there on a ratchet, out to the side on a soft ratchet, rotation at the thigh, double jointed knee, get through the full bend. You have an ankle tilt all the way that way, ankle tilt the other way. You have a forward and backward heel tilt, toe tilt, every tilt possible in those feet. And for a size comparison, there is Saltus next to the Takara Tomy RC Ultra Magnus and the Fans Toys version of Cup. And it looks really good. I really like the way it pairs up with this RC. Now, I was not a fan of the MMC RC, but I think this Springer fits in just fine with the rest of the Takara Tomy figure. And of course, I've got to show it with the Fans Toys version of Springer. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you'll know there is going to be a versus video with these two. So I'm just going to show you this comparison. Safe to say it's going to be an interesting versus an in interesting comparison. So final thoughts on the MMC Saltus. Let's start with the positives. I think it looks great in all three modes. The paint job, there's just enough paint to make it visually interesting. And the plastics and the overall quality is really high. Speaking of quality, I forgot to mention die cast on this. Uh, the feet are die cast, the thighs and hips are die cast, and some of the inner hardware is die cast. Uh, it does have a lot of heft to it, it's a pretty heavy figure, and overall feels robust. It feels like it's going to last for a long time. Um, I also like all the inclusions, all of the accessories are good, there's nothing here that I thought was uh, wasteful, so I like the IDW head and the trident, even though I don't care for this, I'll never display it, it's nice that they give you this option for those that like the IDW look. I do like the missile and the alternate smiling face. Uh, those are useful inclusions. And then I also like the adapters that allow you to attach the weapons in all three modes. That's great. You can uh, have storage for weapons. And we've, that's kind of a forgotten art. You know, Not all recent Transformers do that. So I love that. Um, negatives wise, I don't love the way they did the joint on the foot. It doesn't lock in. So sometimes when you're trying to pose him, he can fall forward or backwards on this. But the good news is they're on screws. So you can always tighten those screws up, you know, basically loosen it and retighten it. And you'll get those feet to, you know, kind of tighten up. You can actually see a little bit of a, but you can, you can fix them and it'll pose just fine. So overall, I do recommend it. It is one of the best Springers I've handled. In fact, I would probably say this is one of the best MMC figures to date. They really nailed it. They did a really good job on the hardware, on everything. So you can pick this up right now from Toy Dojo if you're interested. That's really it for this review. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.